Hallelujah. Jesus is Lord. Amen. Amen. We just broke that spirit of heaviness, that darkness that I felt coming over this ministry right now. That's why I said praise the Lord. You know how you defeat the devil? You praise the Lord. Because he's already lost. And when you're praising the Lord, you're acknowledging the victory that Christ has already given you. Like I said before, and I'll say it again until we get it in our hearts and minds. The devil has been defeated. Yes, Jesus amen. is Lord. Yes, he is yes. beneath. You are above. You are the head. You are not the tail. That's right. Never live as such. The only one we bow to while we're here is Jesus. That's right. Amen. Mm, hallelujah. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus is your anointing. That's the title today. Ladies, welcome. Back there, if you need water or something. <laughs> you need something to drink, get it. Our home's your home. Thank you, Lord. Remember something. So many people want to know what their anointing is. When you got saved, you got anointed. Yes, amen. When you gave your heart to Jesus, the anointed one came to live within you. Uh -huh. Stop looking for an anointing when all the anointing you're ever going to have is alive in you. You just don't let it live. Yeah. Uh -huh. Because you're in bondage to what people have said about you. You've listened to a bunch of preachers tell you what you have to do to have an anointing. Uh -huh. They Come give on. you, call me and I'll pray for you and I'll show you how to walk anointed. Oh, mm -hmm. <laughs> I almost said something. <laughs> Shame on me. Because the only one that can tell you about your anointing is the one that lives within That's you. Right. Do I get the word of the Lord? Yes. With a prophetic calling, I speak into people's lives all the time. But when I anoint you for your calling, it's already in you. That's right. It was in you before you were formed in your mother's womb. Read Jeremiah, the first chapter. Amen. It is so important that you stop looking for man to tell you what your anointing is when the anointed one who saved you and called you into his service lives within you. Uh -huh. Come on. Man, if we ever got a hold of this today, we all look for the oil to come. Heck, the oil's flowing in you. You'll see where the oil really comes from today. Right. You got your Bibles, turn to John, 1 John, 2nd chapter. Hmm. Remember just before we start with verse. 20 and 23 and 27, John talks about how those that are not of God are of the Antichrist in that chapter. And you're going to see the manifestation of it in your walk here with Jesus. Because the Antichrist is the Antichrist is coming. Heck, he was here over 2,000 years That's ago. Right. When John wrote this almost 2,000 years ago, whatever the dates were, he said it's already in the world. It's a spirit. Uh -huh. It's the spirit that denies that Jesus is the Son of God. And those that deny that, if they die like that, they're going to spend eternity in darkness. Uh -huh. But it's going to, God's going to manifest those that are not of Christ and those that are. It's going to be so evident. All you got to do is walk through the stores nowadays. I went through Smith's the other day. I went, where do I start here? Um, because, no, it's that, the devil has people so blinded. And so deaf. It's like the, the little thing with the monkeys. They haven't seen no evil, hear no evil, speak no evil. But he has people blinded. I tell people the truth that Jesus is real and he's coming. And they look at me like my head started to multiply. <laughs> and it's just like they have, it's sad. Because they can't hear the truth. And unless you know the truth, it's the yes. only thing that can set you free. That's right. See, so that's why the church has to rise up this year. This is going to be a year. If yes. you want to be used by God, oh my God, Ooh, He Jesus. do stuff in you and through you. You have to remember it's not you who live and do the saving and the healing. It is God, the hope of glory in you. Amen? Amen. Verses 20 to 23 and 27. But you have. You have. You're not getting. You have it already. Yes. An anointing from the Holy One, and you know all things, and I have not written to you because you do not know the truth, but because you know it. And that no lie is of the truth. Who is the liar? But he who denies that Jesus is the Christ. He is the Antichrist who denies the Father and the Son. Whoever denies the Son, watch this, does not have the Father either. See, when people say that Jesus was just the Son, He wasn't God, that means they have neither one. So when your whole witnesses come to your door and they say Jesus isn't God, say, wait a minute, you don't have either one then. You're in trouble. It's a good witnessing tool because then they have to stop and think, what do you mean? He was just a son. No, he's Jehovah. Yes. 
He was always God and He's always going to be God. Amen? Amen. But he who acknowledges the Son has the Father also. Now watch, verse 27, here it goes. But the anointing which you have received from Him abides in you. And you do not need to ask anyone to teach you, but the same anointing teaches you concerning all things and is true and is not a lie just as it has been taught to you. You will abide in Him. 1 John 5, chapter 6 and 7, The Father, the Word, and the Spirit are one. The Holy Spirit, John 14, 26, that's in you, will teach you all things. Remember something, even if you're listening to the Christian TV, listen to the Holy Spirit. Because uh -huh. you'll know if that man or woman is speaking from the spirit of truth or the spirit of deception. That's right. That's right. There's a lot of bad leaven out there today, and you've got to discern which one is which. Because once you get bad leaven in here, now God's got to fix that. You know how many people get led astray because they haven't really been taught by the Spirit of God who knows all, sees all, and is in us all. And that's why I say just because somebody's up there and they got a Bible and they got this and they're walking around and they got their degrees and they're all that in a bag of chips like my wife would say doesn't mean they're of God. That's right. Come on. Okay. I know lots of people I've talked to say they're Christians, but nothing in their voice, nothing in their life shows any fruit of a vine. It doesn't show the fruit of God. And it's evident. So watch what you're listening to because we're in those last days where the deceiver is going to be speaking through people that are in the pulpits and on TV yes. and they're going to be leading people astray. Amen. You're going to hear all these people with formulas on how to get blessed, how to get rich, how to have a stronger anointing. Why would you want a stronger anointing when you've got the same power that raised Jesus from the dead yes. in you? Amen. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Church, we got power. We got power and we don't use it. Yes. Oh, hallelujah. That word anointing. It means anointing with oil was a symbol of endowment. With the Spirit of God for the duties of the office to which a person was consecrated. That's the act of setting apart a person for worship and service unto God. What is our service unto God? Mark 10, 45. Jesus said, I didn't come to be served, but to serve and to give my life a ransom for many. Romans 12, you give your life back to God as a living sacrifice. Bless you. It's so important that this year you make a decision that you're going to walk with Jesus and not this world any longer. Whatever you need materialistically wise, He's promised that to you. But the thing is, you're looking for blessings instead of the one that blesses. See, the church got to change its focus. I've heard, you know, like I said, I'm a, God, I'm a man of God that believes in the prosperity of God. He says He delights in our prosperity. He freely gives you all things to enjoy. He'll fill your home with wealth and riches. His blessings will make you rich. He'll add no sorrows to it. Those are all promises of God. But if that's what you're seeking, you're not seeking His will. Look how quiet He got. Whoops. <laughs> you got a wish list today? <clears throat> See, because Jesus never worried about what he was going to eat. Heck, he can multiply the bread and the fish. <laughs> oh, you don't have any food? Give me that. Hey, give me thanks to the Father. Bam, and I'll feed everybody. And people are worried about food. Not me. I could use a little less probably. <laughs> I was corrected yesterday. It's okay. He's working on me. <laughs> so, but it's so important that this, that I'm telling you, this year is so crucial in the history of humanity. Yes. God, I was telling a brother last night when we went out to eat, I said, this year God's going to show off on His children that walk with Him. Amen. That want a relationship with Him, a deeper, more intimate relationship. God is intimate with the upright in Proverbs. Amen? Mm, yes. Intimacy, when you talk about intimacy, everybody goes, uh-oh. Look how quiet it just got. Look how quiet it just got. Because when you talk about intimacy, that's from the inside. You, you won't want God to be intimate with you and He lives inside of you. He knows you. He knows you better than you know yourself. And if you're in denial to where you're at today, you're afraid of intimacy with the Holy One of Israel, the heavens and all the earth, who before a day on the earth knew you, knew what you would do, knew you'd say yes or no today to let Him be intimate with you. I'm telling you, the church, we don't have time to play anymore. Amen. The church has to stop doing things and start listening and allowing Christ, the hope of glory, to live through it. The reason we don't see signs, wonders, and miracles in the grocery stores and everywhere we go is because we leave it in the church. You're, this isn't a church. You're the church. 
This is the year the church go out into the world and share yes. Jesus with people Hallelujah. and watch people get saved and delivered. This is harvest time. Amen. This is Amen. miracle time. Amen. Oh man, I might get through this today. Who Jesus? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm excited because of what God's been showing me. Yes. I'm excited because I see what he wants to do with his children. Uh -huh. Yes. We so limit God. I'm telling you, so many people, you, I, even when I'm out witnessing, talking to people on the phone that don't even come, just Christian friends of mine, they're always talking about what all these ministers are doing. And when I wait for them to get done yakking, <laughs> chitty, chitty, chat, chat, I go, what are you doing? Uh-huh, come on. The phone goes silent. Hello. What are you allowing Christ to do through you? I thought you were all crucified with Christ. It's no longer you who live, but Christ in you. Oh, got quiet again, Karen. See that? Guess what? Unless you give him permission to live his life through you, he won't. And you know what you'll be? You'll be a church goer. Nothing wrong with that. You're going to go to heaven. God's going to bless you. you got a mansion waiting for you. That's all done deal. I've been there. I've seen it. That's settled. That's why I tell my wife this morning. I have eternity thinking, but I don't get too eternal thinking. Because you get so heavenly minded, you know... Right. usefulness to God here. Right. I heard a guy say that on TV the other day and I changed the station. He was rolling about revival and what God's going to do. And then he says, Jesus, you need to come now. Click. What about the billions of souls that are going to get saved? Right. Never be so selfish to want to go home before your time. That's right. Mm -hmm. Because there's billions of souls. Well, you've never been like that, Kareem, but the rest of us were. were. Um, hey, but it's so important that we, we redevote ourselves. We need to be devoted. Uh -huh. I look at these Muslims that kill people in the name of some demonic God that they worship. They're so devoted to killing and destroying. Imagine if the church was as devoted to seeing this world saved, what would happen, and the name of Jesus being lifted up and glorified, what He could do with a church Amen. that was that passionate about seeing Amen. His name lifted up everywhere we go. Signs, wonders, and mm. miracles everywhere you go. Masses, tens of millions of people getting saved at a time. It's time the church get back to what they were created for. And that's to live the life of Christ Jesus and to do His works while we're here. Mm. Amen. I'm fired up today. Yes. Coming out of my shell today. That's what I'm going to do. Praise God. Finally, huh? <laughs> yeah, finally breaking out. Second Corinthians, first chapter. That word anointing is so important when you see it means you're consecrated, you're set aside. But you're going to see here coming up that you're consecrated into a more powerful priesthood than the Levitical one. I'll show you the difference of the oil. This was man-made. You have God's oil, who is, who is the oil itself. He is your oil. He is your anointing. 2 Corinthians, the first chapter, 15 to 24. We're just going to do 21 to 22. Remember what I said about the new covenant? God gives, God does, God will. It's all through there. It doesn't say you're going to. Everything in the new covenant and salvation that we just celebrated today, the blood of the new covenant, is a gift. We didn't earn it. We sure don't deserve it. It just shows how much He loves us and cares about us. It just does. Watch what God does for you. He Now He, that's God, who establishes us with you in Christ and has anointed us in God, who also sealed us and given us the Spirit in our hearts as a guarantee. Now one of the big problems with the churches is when God consecrates them and sets them aside, they don't go into the spirit realm right away, they stay in their flesh. Where all your fears and insecurities and low self-esteem and all the other nonsense you think about yourself, which is a lie of the devil. Because when you're called and consecrated and sanctified, look what God says, don't go there, Psalm 20 verse 6. Now I know that the Lord saves His anointed, and He will answer from His holy heaven with the saving strength of His right hand. Look at that. Now that you're sanctified, consecrated, He's going to do what? He saves His anointed. Psalm 121, He'll guard you going out and coming in from this time forth and evermore. Psalm 105, 14 and 15. God will not permit the evil to do you harm, and it says, Touch not mine anointed ones and do my prophets no harm. You've been anointed by God. He's your defender. Don't worry about what people say, threats or anything. I was, I've been threatened all the time, 27 and a half years of ministry. Oh, somebody's going to kill you someday. I said, praise God, time to go home. 
But you know what? The Word says nobody can touch me till my time's up. That's right. Amen. That's right. You know why? Because I believe that. I don't believe the Word of man. Amen. Amen. See, that's why I know we're coming into the most exciting time in the history of humanity. And when all these other men of God have been saying the same thing that I want ministers that I trust because their word has been proven true, I don't listen to people that just talk a lot and it's never backed up by evidence. So but men and women of God that I've heard, they are saying the same things we've been saying in here that God has been prophesying in here. What's coming? I'm telling you something. You should be so excited about this year, not because you're going to do anything great. God's going to do greatness through you. That's right, amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you, He wants to show off Amen. for you. You're His daughter. You're His son. We are the bride. He wants you all clothed with new garments of salvation, robes of righteousness. So when you walk out these doors today, people see Jesus in you and not you any longer. When they hear you speak, they hear the words coming from heaven, not from man. Because God's word is above everything else. Everything has to bow to this. This is the infallible truth. And when you speak it, expect it to happen. I was telling the minister yesterday, when I went in there yesterday morning to moms, and I walked in there and I said, Brother, I said, start speaking God's word this year in your circumstances. Stop looking at circumstances. Speak the word, Adam. The word will take care of that. Not you. We didn't overcome the world. We overcome all things because everything's already overcome by Jesus. He's already overcome the world. He's already provided all you're ever going to need. He's already settled everything because he said it's finished. We're living a life of victory because of what Jesus has done. Amen. Now you've been consecrated for something. Go to 1 Peter. Where is that second chapter? We're just going to read verses 4 to 5 and verse 9. Everybody's read this before, but remember what I said, when you've been anointed... You've been consecrated for the service of God. Second chapter. Second chapter, isn't it? I don't have it on me. Yes. Yeah, it is. The priesthood. Typo. <laughs> uh -huh. Don't fired up. But remember something. When you realize, when you got saved, God took you that day, anointed you for a purpose, consecrated you into the service and worship of God. Now, this isn't just for some people, this verse. That's first. First Peter. First Peter, second Yeah. Okay. We got it now? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> but remember something. You have to receive this in your heart. This isn't for a select group of people. This is all that call themselves born again Christians. Yeah. You were anointed for this. You were chosen for this. In one form or another, God has called you all into the service of the kingdom of God. Verses 4 and 5. Coming to Him as to a living stone, rejected indeed by men, but chosen by God. See, when people reject you as a priest and a king of God, they're not rejecting you but Him. He was rejected for you. So never take it personal when people don't like the way you walk with God. When they say, who do you think you are? Tell them. You're a son or daughter of the Most High God. Amen. You're a priest and a king. You rule in this life through Jesus Christ. Romans 5.17. That's who you are. You're born again. You're sanctified. You're redeemed. You're forgiven. You've been made worthy by the blood of Jesus. Amen. Tell them what Christ has done for you. Amen. And then maybe they'll want to come into the kingdom of Amen. God. Amen. Your testimony is not about you. Your testimony is what Jesus has done for you. Amen. Amen. He is your living testimony. People always ask me, what's your testimony? Jesus when I ask you what your testimony is, tell them about Jesus. He saved me. He died for me. He rose again. He washed my sins away with His blood. Tell them the testimony yes. that Jesus set you free from the powers of darkness to walk in the light of the gospel of truth in Jesus' name. In victory and triumph in everything that you do. Hallelujah. Mm. Mm. Oh God, being, you're being built up. Where was I? By the chosen by God, precious also. As living stones are being built up a what? A spiritual house, a holy priesthood, to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. Verse 9. But you are a, not going to be, you are a chosen generation, 
a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people, that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Revelation 1, verse 5, he washed us from our sins in his own blood and made us priests and kings to his God and Father. You've been made. See, you're not going to be. People miss that what happened the day they, they got saved. Because we're not teaching people. This is what happened when you get saved. See, we need to go out to explain it to people. Listen, when you give your heart to Jesus and you become a citizen of heaven, this is what God's made you. We've got to show them that they're conveyed, like it says in Colossians, from the kingdom of darkness into the, into the kingdom of His beloved Son. They've been transferred from here to here. They belong. Their citizenship changed. Their DNA changed. i got new DNA. I'm not related to my carnal family. They have nothing to do with me. I belong now to a new family. I have new DNA. I have God's blood washed over me and in me. I have His life with inside of me. That had nothing to do with my family tree. I've broken those chains. Because that keeps you in prison. I've been grafted in. We're going to talk about that in a bit. But it's so important that we explain to people, especially people that want to know about why you're a Christian, you need to explain what happens to them when they become one. Don't give a big theological debate and a doctrinal essay on 40 ways to get saved. There's only one. It's through Jesus. Amen. Don't tell people what they have to do. Tell them they have to receive and believe in their heart that Jesus is both Lord God and Savior and the Father raised Him from the dead. Because with confession... Upon Him, your salvation comes. When you ask Him into your heart, but you've got to confess it. You have to believe it. But tell Him how much is in that salvation package. Start sharing what Jesus has done for humanity. Not what the world can do with Him. God can fix any problems. He's already healed all the diseases. He's already destroyed all the curses of the yes. law so we can walk in the newness of life. See, we have to tell people how exciting it is to walk with Jesus. Because it's exciting. It is far from boring. Amen. Some days boring might be good for a few days. I'm just sharing. Mm. I found out yesterday my day planner went right out the window. Mm. I had plans yesterday morning. Didn't get there. I said get up and go. Whoops, never mind. I'm out the door. Sorry. <laughs> See what I mean? But when you're available to God, you'll have one divine appointment after another. You will. It may not, some days you may not have any. It just may be a day of resting in Jesus, being in the Word, listening to worship music, studying His Scriptures, meditating on all that God is inside of you and allowing Him to minister to you. So many Christians get burned out because they don't take time to learn how to rest. If you don't know how to rest and be still with Jesus, you don't trust Him. Amen. Amen. Just the messenger. It's so important that in the Old Testament, the Levitical priesthood, when, when you go back in Exodus, and you read how they made that oil for that. They got the best olives and everything else, and they put them all together to really make that good fragrant oil. Because it says in Exodus, don't go there, um, 37, it says, this is man-made oil. Now watch, I'm going to do this for a reason. He also, they made, see, God even called it holy oil, what they put together. But you have something that's so much more pure in you. And the pure incense of the sweet spices according to the perfumer. Exodus 29, that's where Aaron and his sons were consecrated for the beginning of the Levitical priesthood. That's why I've always said, the priesthood that you've been grafted into is so much more powerful than Aaron's. Because we have a far better, more powerful covenant. You have a far better priesthood with more power, more authority. That's why God's going to hold the church more accountable. See, there it was all works. It was sacrificing the animals. They had their rituals and all their ceremonial stuff that they did. We don't do that. The last sacrifice is over. There's no more sacrifices. He was the last one. We are free from all of those works of the flesh. We're free from all those conditions under the law. We're not free to sin. We're free to walk in grace and truth in Jesus. That's why he says, be holy. See, too many Christians try and make themselves holy, which you can never do. So stop trying to be perfect. 
Allow the holy, perfect high priest that lives within you work on you from the inside out to keep you that, that perfected vessel so he can live his life through. Remember, we're in the days where if you're, if you're a part of a ministry, you're out talking about Jesus, and you're doing it for you because you want something out of it, please don't waste your breath anymore because God won't honor it anymore. Those days are over. He has been so adamant about telling me to tell people, stop being here for you. Start being here for the one who saved you. See, he must take preeminence, the Bible says, in, in, in every area of your life. He can't take second place in not one area of your life because if you put him second in any area, I don't care if it's your finances, your health, your eating, your job, whatever you're doing, your marriage, anything, whatever it is, if he takes second place, you're not going to do well. Because then he's just your Savior. He's not your sovereign Lord over every area of your life. He, it must be a complete... The whole thing must be surrendered. Heart, mind, body, soul, and strength must be surrendered into His sovereign Lordship or He's your Savior. He's not your Lord. I'm going to get an amen for that. Amen. 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 <laughs> Just the messenger. But it's so important that we see today. When I sat on my desk these last two and a half, three days and up half the nights and God was ministering to my heart, it blessed me. See, now when he has me up at night, I don't complain. I don't say I'd rather be on my pillow. Because he wants to talk, and you're too busy during the day, most of you. you got too much going on between your ears to hear his voice. Well, I'm Melissa, but like I said, the rest of us. So, but, but see what I'm saying, though? If he gets you up in the middle of the night, have ears to hear. Because you were too busy during the day, he was trying to speak to you. Now, miss something. He never sleeps and never slumbers. You do. Psalm 121. He's always awake. That's the greatest thing about God. And the more I just submit to whenever He wakes me up, and he, He's been reminding me lately, um, you're not your own. What do you tell everybody? They're not their own. You gave up your ownership to me. You don't make your own time frame. Time belongs to me, and I'm outside of time, so I don't worry about it. Okay, then. See how God sees things? You've got to see it from His perspective to really walk with Him. You got to see that you need him. David gave me a note this morning that our heart is going to beat if we live to 120 years. 4,387,000,000 times. He added it up. He has a lot of time on his hand. So, if we live to 120, that means we got 56 more years, and I don't see me lasting that long because I think Jesus will be back before then. I don't know. He might not be back for 100 years, but a little bit of news I watched this weekend, I went, how much time we got? He said, get out and share me. See, I don't want you looking for his return, and neither does he. That's right. Because, like I said, people are perishing right now. He wants you to have ears to hear. What are you going to do with me to touch lives today, Lord? Is there somebody I need to go feed? Is there somebody I need to go pray for? Is there somebody sick? Bop, bop, like yesterday morning. Get up and get dressed. Go get the hospital room. She's in and go pray for this woman. She's being attacked. So I went and got the hospital room. Spent 40, 45 minutes in the hospital yesterday morning until they felt all kinds of better. Until her body was on fire with the Holy Ghost, healing and kicking that pneumonia out. Amen. See, it's so important. See, because I'm, I didn't have my own. I was sitting down to work more on the sermon yesterday morning. And I got no peace about it. Let's get up and get dressed and go. Yes, Lord. See what I'm saying? Be available to the Holy Spirit. You don't have anything that important going on in your life other than serving God. Amen. Amen. Because if you do, your priorities are not right. Don't let anybody touch your anointing. You are anointed. He has set you aside. He has chosen you. Stop letting people tell you what to do with it because it doesn't belong to them and neither do you. You belong to God. Now walk with Him and be pleasing to Him and He'll deal with everything else. Amen. Let's save the Lord. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. you got your Bibles. Turn to Romans 11. I always talk about how Jesus made the two into one new man. Romans 11, 16 to 18, it's 11 to 36. This really stuck out on me. I think it was like Thursday night. 
I was reading this and then I left it to the side. I always make a lot of notes for three or four days and then the Holy Spirit puts the sermon together. But as I was reading it, something jumped out at me. You know, in Ephesians 2, 14, 18, he says how he made the, the two into one new man, the Gentile and the Jew, were both, they both were attached to the vine. Amen? Amen. The vine is God, but the vine is also the olive tree. He says that in Revelation also. Jesus is the olive tree. See, the oil you got comes directly from God. The, the holy oil that's in you is from God Himself. Watch what it says here in Romans. This really jumped out at me the other night. And I just kind of meditated on it. And I said, yeah, where the branches, you're the vine. He said, no, 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 no. Read it again. So watch what happens here. Verses 16 to 18, Romans 11. For if the first fruit is holy, the lump is also holy. And if the root is holy, so are the branches. And if some of the branches were broken off, you, being wild olive tree, were grafted in among them, with them, became a partaker of the root. And the fatness of the olive tree. He literally gave me a picture. Your oil comes from me because I'm the olive tree you were grafted into. And so were they. That's how he made the two into one new man. Remember, the oil in the Old Testament was man-made. The oil you got in you, the holy anointing oil, who is Christ Himself, the Holy Spirit, because sometimes it's referred to the Holy Spirit as your anointing oil. Do not boast against the branches, but if you do boast, remember that you do not support the root, but the root supports you. That's in John 15. He's the vine where the branches. Apart from Him, we can do nothing. The vision He gave me the other night when I was looking at that, and I reread it, and I reread it, because I never really looked at it that way. It was like I saw Him... Remember, that vine, he, he's, he's our life. They're grafted in, and they're going to be regrafted in. So when people put down Israel that their branches were broken off, they better be careful. That's right. Because God said He's coming to honor His covenant with Israel. They can be regrafted back in, and they will be. And they are by, by the thousands all over the earth right now. God's drawing them back. You notice the 12 tribes are coming back to Israel. Mm. You notice everybody's turning against Israel like never before. That's why we keep praying for Israel. Yes. That's why we keep yes. donating to Israel from this ministry, and we always will. Yes. We will always stand with Israel. We will always stand in the gap for her. Amen? Amen. Amen. But you're grafted in. You're grafted in. See, the oil we have is pure. It wasn't made by man. It was made by God. What do you think comes out of your walls in your house? That's not man-made oil. That's God Himself being poured into your home. Amen. That's how powerful it is. You got a whole. And could you imagine if we all realize the oil that's in here? That's why the church isn't united. They're looking for man-made ways to unite instead of God uniting. Mm. God broke down all the barriers between us. Amen. Amen. Yeah, in Ephesians 2, 14 to 18, read that, how he made two into one new man. One of the things he showed me late last night, I was sitting there, he goes, remember the ten virgins? How five, the oil, their lamps ran out. What does he say you are? You're a lamp. You're a light unto the world. The only way your lamp's going to run out of oil if you disconnect from God. That's right. Amen. He'll never disconnect from you. He says, you have an eternal flow until you come home of holy oil living in you. Why do you think when I was praying on that woman yesterday in the hospital, her whole body was burning up? Had nothing to do with me. It was the holy oil in me, the Holy Spirit that came out. The whole one arm was on fire. And then I was leaving and said, grab her hand. Pray over here. So I prayed that. Now both arms were on fire and the Holy Ghost went through her whole body. Praise that was God. the healing. Yes. But the restoration. Yes. And, and the peace came yes. back, and then she could breathe better, and then she felt better. You could just see her whole countenance change, mm -hmm. because God in me, the hope of glory, the anointing in me went into her. Yeah. And she felt the burning and the healing happening as I prayed for her. It wasn't I. I was a conduit. It's like a straw stuck into heaven. The oil goes from there through me and out, just like all of you. I told you, all of you, God's going to expect all of you in this ministry. You're going to be in this house. Guess what? You're going to be laying hands on the sick. You're going to be giving words of encouragement and edification and prophetic words. This is a prophetic fivefold ministry. And it doesn't work that way in most ministries because you don't believe you're a part of the fivefold. The oil, you don't see us connected with a flow of oil. I'm going to show you that scripturally here in a second. It's so important that we see what really unites us. We have a flow of oil that's never going to run out. Your lamp should never go dull. It does because you unplug the funnel from which it comes from. See, the Old Testament had to make oil. We don't. 
Now, we use anointing oil. The Bible says, anoint those that are sick with oil and they shall recover. We do that here all the time. Amen? Amen. And we will continue to do it because that's acknowledging God, the holy healing oil that flows through us and into them. This is just a representation of who He is. But the oil that's in you is holy. Mm. It's holy. It's powerful. Yes. And it never runs dry. I stood there on the banks of the river. It's never going to run dry. Who wants swimming someday, okay? Amen. And what's cool about heaven, you don't bring no swimming trunks. <laughs> Praise God. Oh, it's awesome. I Praise can't God. Right in there. Karina mm. asked me something about a scroll a while back. It's in the sermon. Mm -hmm. Psalm 40, verses 6 to 8. Remember what I said? When you're consecrated, you're set aside for service unto God. Years ago, it had been five, six years ago, we had a woman in this ministry, God visited her early one morning, took her up in the spirit, showed her standing in here, right here in front of this pulpit, handed her a scroll, and she opened it and went across the whole top of the ministry. It was like a powder blue, glorified in a powder blue. And I asked him about that and what's written on it. I'll show you in a second. Psalm 40, verses 6 to 8, Sacrifice and offering you did not desire. My ears you have opened. See, hearing from God. Burnt offerings and sin offerings you did not require. Then I said, Behold, I come. In the scroll of the book it is written of me. Psalm 139. I delight to do your will. No, that's in Psalm uh, 40. I delight to do your will, O God, your Lord is within my heart. Psalm 139, 16. Your whole life and what God consecrated you for, sanctified you for, is written on a scroll. It's in His book. It's a scroll. See, and, and we don't seek God. What are you going to do with me? What are you, how are you going to use me? How are you going to live through my life to change this world? It's already pre-written what God wants to do with us all. And it's on a scroll in His book, not ours. See, too many times we become a Christian, we want to write our own story. Oh, got quiet, didn't I? You want to write your own calling. You're not entitled to that. That's not in your job description. He called you, He bought you, He consecrated you, He sanctified you, He set you aside for His service. Stop trying to write your own calling. That's why so many people are miserable in ministry today. They want to be like another minister. They want to be like an evangelist. They want to be like this. They want to be like that. The thing you need to want to be like is Jesus. People need to meet Jesus again, not people so. But the life of Jesus in us. Uh, this whole year has to be about Jesus. He's coming. And we got work to do. But you're not going to do any labors. He's going to work through you. See, you have to separate yourself from you doing and allow God to do through you. You really have to see yourself separated out. This guy's dead. That part of me's dead. Okay, go ahead, Jesus. You got to go back to talking to Jesus all day. We're not quiet to God. Why wouldn't he? He lives inside you. He wants to talk to you. It's amazing how many people say, well, you talk to God all the time. Yeah, why not? He's my only hope. I don't have hope in humanity, that's for sure. I sure don't have hope in myself because that would be foolishness at its worst. To ever get up here and think I can do this in and of myself, oh my God, that is the most foolish thing a man could possibly do to himself. That eliminates God from being up here speaking to you by His Spirit, His Word that's alive. See, this is alive. This is living. And He wants to do stuff through you. Jesus said, it's not I, but the Father who does the works through me. See, so stop thinking you've got to go out and do all these works. The works of Christ are going to be done by Christ who lives within you. Not you. We can lead tens of thousands of people to salvation in here, but we didn't save a soul. Jesus did. He's the Savior. Amen. We bring him to Jesus, not to us. Tell him this is a year, it's about Jesus. I can't. Thank you, Jesus. So remember something when I say that about the scroll, your life is written out. Don't ever take away from it. The reason it doesn't get fulfilled what God has written about you on that scroll is because of you, not him. Amen. Thank you. Yeah, because when you, you, when you humbly submit yourself to God, you've given up all your rights that you think you have, but you don't. You really don't. You can exercise them. That's why I tell people, they said, well, I got free will. I said, I suggest you don't exercise it. Just saying. Because every time I exercise mine, I usually want to bruise somewhere. Stub a toe, something happens. 
<laughs> God says, how's that free will doing for you? I am not the only Satan here that exercises free will a few times. Well, Melissa hasn't, but the rest of us. See what, yeah, you're, you're all guilty. Come on now. Well, especially not Kim, but. Yeah, you can. Psalm 133, 1 through 2. Everybody knows this, but when you think about the holy oil that's in all of you, think about what God showed me in the picture. I literally saw the oil flowing from Jesus in through His whole church connecting us all. It connected us. There was a flow of oil from Christ, the hope of glory, flowing into us, uniting us, that comes from heaven that never runs dry. No wonder why there's such division in the body of Christ, why churches are so separated by names and denominations. They don't see us connected by God's holy oil, His Holy Spirit, uniting us as a family of one. Could you imagine if even three or four ministries in this town just laid their lives down, gave up all their denominational teaching, and said, we're here to be run by your Spirit, united with your Holy Spirit, and with your oil flowing through us. You give me 50, 60 Christians that are on fire that don't live for themselves, we could change this city in about a week. Because then when you prayed, you'd watch the earth shake. Like it says, when God is walking amongst your mist, these heavens will thunder, they'll drop forth rain, and the ground will shake. Where we go, the ground should shake. You're walking with God, you should expect the ground to shake where you go. Forget earthquakes, that's nothing. It should, it should tremble. You know why? Because the devil's beneath you. And when you know who you are, he trembles at your very presence. He hates you with a passion. Praise God! That means you're effective for Jesus. Bless you. It is so important that you start to see who you are today. In Jesus' name. Psalm 133, 1 through 2. Behold, how good and how pleasant it is for the brethren to what? Dwell together in unity. It is like precious oil upon the beard, running down on the beard of Aaron, on his head and then on his beard, running down on the edge of his garments. See, the five-fold ministry that every ministry should be operating in, you're all gifted. I've said it before. And this year you're going to hear it every time we're together. You're gifted. Stop sitting on it. Not mad on me today. No, I wouldn't. I wouldn't do that. Stop sitting on your calling. The world needs you. Well, God wouldn't have you here. I'm sorry. You wouldn't be here this morning if God didn't want to use you. You've all been around me for too long. You know I don't put any whipped cream or butter on this stuff or cherries on the top. Praise God. <laughs> Oh, he told me this year, he said it's going to be more intense. He wants to take us deeper into him so it's no longer us who live at all. We're not here for us. We're not here for things. The things are going to come. See, the blessings of Abraham are yours, but I don't look for that. I look for what are you going to do with me today to make a difference in this planet? Because this thing's my buddy, I told you, I'm talking for three years in California yesterday. And I'll tell you what, what a blessing it was to talk to him. And because and, he knew me from my uh, my heathen days, he was kind of a heathen, but he was never really all that bad. We'll just leave that alone. But he saw me. He knew me for years. We played tournament softball together. He was a good ball player. And boy, we talked yesterday. He says, "You are a walking, talking miracle." Because they all saw me perishing. They all did. I was. You talk about a hot mess. I was beyond that. I was unapproachable. I was unreachable. But not by God. Amen. God came Amen. and got me. Praise People God. couldn't get me, but God could. And when we talked yesterday, it was just such a blessing that I got to fellowship and pray with him on the phone yesterday because he had turned his life around a long time ago. He's got now I found out how old the kids are, the daughter's married, the other boy's getting this education, getting these degrees. I'm going, we were partying when he wasn't even married, he didn't have any kids. Whoa. So you realize you start dating yourself when you talk to people you haven't talked to in years. Oh, what a blessing to see how well his kids and everything have turned out. It was just such a blessing of the Lord yesterday because I, I think about him, I just couldn't find him, and then he called me. Praise God. So it was so awesome to talk to an old friend that he's seen the transformation that God has done in me. He saw me at my worst, 
And now he's watching the stuff on, he went onto the, the web page and stuff. He says, oh yeah, I said, watch this stuff if you want to know what's happening. So we, we, we built each other yesterday, but it was, see, God brings you a blessing even when you're not asking for it. I went to the hospital, I had the privilege of praying for somebody. I lived there. I tried to get to the store all morning yesterday. And then the phone rang, and so I put her on speaker in the car, and I'm driving. I said, okay, we're going home to pray this one out. I'm not getting off the phone for a while. Obviously, I didn't need to go to the store because God had a better plan. See, when God changes your little divine plan, let Him. There's a reason. There's a blessing in it. There's a blessing in it. You know what God loves to do? Bless His kids. He loves to bless us. That's what He loves to do. Remember something. Think about the oil flowing through you and uniting the whole church. Remember in the book of Acts? Who'd they talk about? <laughs> Jesus. Who'd they talk about? Salvation in Jesus. What do they preach? Get saved, get filled with the Holy Ghost. You notice they didn't really talk much about themselves. God said, get out and go share the gospel. The Great Commission. Make disciples of all nations. Lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Cast out demons. All in His name. You have the power of His name living in you. You have the power of eternity. to Use His name everywhere you go. When you pray for the sick next time, use the power of His name. It says, in my name, you'll lay hands on the sick. Use His name. When you've got circumstances, use His name. He's given it to you. You're stamped with the name of Jesus. And when you know that, you'll address everything differently. You'll never bow again to a circumstance, a bad report, or anything else. You'll speak in the name of Jesus and watch the Word change everything. Oh, hallelujah, church. It's time to become aggressive. Amen. It's time. The church has been so complacent for so long, has sat back and watched the devil take over our country. Hello. Amen. We got Muslims being sworn into our government that, that swore not to uphold our Constitution and we stood by and watched it. How blind are people in this country Amen. today? Amen. You know, we're going to take our country back by lifting up His name Amen. and standing firm yes. on this word and saying, I bow to no other God. There's only one God. Yes. There's only one. There's only one Savior. And we need to be a church that's not afraid. He asked me, he said, well, how do you do things? as far as what you can and can't preach. I said, I don't preach. The Holy Ghost preaches. That's right, My tongue belongs to Him. Whatever God wants to say to Him, you know what? He'll back me up. He'll back me up. You can't silence Him. The only time you're going to get silenced is when you allow the devil to tell you to be quiet. Amen. Amen. Not me. Not me. Guess what? I'm still here. Amen. And I'll be here tomorrow. The day after, and the day after, until God is done with me. Then He can come get me. And until God's done with me, I'm not going nowhere. And I'm going to keep preaching. I'm going to keep telling people about Jesus. I'm going to keep doing all the things Christ told me I can do in His name. Because He's already given me the victory over everything in His name. Amen. The name of Jesus. Amen. Isaiah 61, 1 through 3. Mm. When I say where to do the works of Christ, it's right here. Because what the Father anointed Jesus for, now this was spoken about Jesus in Isaiah 800 years before He even got here. So that being said, what Jesus was anointed for, you are anointed for. Yes. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Don't get nervous. Oh God, He's calling us out again. Yes, I am. If God's calling me out, He's calling all of you out. Amen? Amen. I'm just Amen. sharing the love. Sharing the love. Praise <laughs> God. Remember what we read in 1 John. The anointing that's in you. You have an anointing from the Holy One. Don't forget that you are consecrated. You are as set aside as Jesus Christ Himself. Jesus said in the Word, it says, As He is, so are you in the world. See, Jesus wasn't of this world. He didn't desire anything of it because He didn't need it. Whatever He needed, He could just speak and it would manifest. Amen? Amen? Why aren't we doing the same as a church? Just saying. Watch what Jesus... Now remember something? This was Jesus' first sermon in the book of Luke. And they tried to kill Him. First sermon. That's a quick turnaround, isn't it? His ministry just started and they were trying to kill Him already. Wow! Whew, man, usually it takes a little time for people not to like you that much, but... The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. 
That's you, by the way. Because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, the opening of the prison to those who are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord, the day of vengeance of our God which is coming, to comfort all who mourn, to console those who mourn in Zion, give them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they may be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that He may be glorified. You are trees of righteousness planted by the Lord on this earth for times such as this, to do everything Jesus was anointed for. Amen. You got the same anointing Jesus has had when he walked this earth. You got the same one. Everybody says, well, no, that was Jesus. No, that's you. Who lives in you? Jesus. Jesus. The fullness of the Godhead dwells in bodily form. Who's in you? The fullness of the Godhead. Who moved inside of you? The holy oil of God that lives in you. That anointing that's on Jesus is on you. It's not only on you, it's in you. Yes, amen. That's why the church is without excuse. When people say, well, I can't help anybody, you can't. You have the oil of joy in you. Right, right. To help people that are in mourning and need comfort. It's amazing if we put our lives aside how much more comforting we could do. You know why you don't? Because you're not healed. Healing you first must take precedent over going out to help others. Or else you're not really ministering in the spirit of love and the oil of joy. You're not really ministering with the compassion of Christ if you're still a damaged soul. Yeah, you can, but if you allow God today really into your heart and soul, like when we had communion today, to really cleanse your heart, to really purify your heart as pure as Jesus' heart is, you'll be effective out there. Because people are going to feel His love, not judgment. Because if people feel you judging them, you go out and say, man, you've got to change this, that. You can't change anybody. You didn't change yourself. Jesus changed you. He came and got you. You didn't go find Jesus. I love when people tell me, I went and found Jesus. You're still looking. Because no one comes under him unless the Father draw him. I checked the book. Uh, yeah. Well, you did, you, with the rest of us, bro. Um, it's so important that we see that until people see Jesus inside the church again, which is you, they're not going to come. Amen. They're not going to come. God can't make it any clearer. God is love. Amen. The love chapter, 1 Corinthians 13, love never fails. Faith, hope. Everybody's got lots of faith. They've got lots of hope. But it says, the greatest of these is love. You notice faith doesn't work but by love. When we were worshiping today, he says, tell everybody, they're not seeing the answers to their prayers because they can't see them with their eyes yet. Faith isn't by what you see. You're not believing God for the bigger stuff because you can't see anything in the natural. You're waiting for something to manifest when he's waiting for you to believe for something so big there's no way it can happen in your life. Amen. See, how's God going to do something big if you can't believe him for it? I checked. He spoke and there was light. He spoke. You had birds in the air, animals on the land, fish in the sea. He spoke when this planet was water and the continents came up. That boy's got some power. We talk about power. We talked about it last week. At his presence, the, the oceans tremble at his presence. The foundation of the ocean shakes when he speaks. He speaks and 30 foot waves are flat like an ice skating rink. And you don't speak and stuff when he gave you the same power. Oh. Man. God wants to do stuff. Amen. You should be excited right now. Amen. Like I said, this isn't for a select few. It's to all who believe who they are in Christ. Yes. And what you have in you. What you have in you. Stop waiting for an anointing when you got it. You already got everything you're going to get. Amen. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Amen. The works of Jesus Christ. Go to John 14. You just saw some of the anointing you have in Isaiah 61. Watch what Jesus says here in John 14. This is one of my favorite verses. 
when I was at the hospital yesterday sharing this verse with someone and with my friend on the phone, I said, I'm only doing what Jesus told me to go do and what I could do in his name. That's all I do. I don't do any more. I don't add to it. I don't take from it. Jesus said, go do this. That's right. <clears throat> go into all the world. I used to try that excuse that he said, minister salvation unto all the creatures. I wanted to go live in West Yellowstone and minister to the creatures. <laughs> he said, that's not really what I'm talking about, but that's okay. I said, do you love those animals? You made them. Hello. <laughs> Running from the calling. Amen. None of you have ever done that, though. Praise God. Oh, oh. I was asked why I never had a motorhome. I always wanted a motorhome and travel, evangelize and stuff. He said, if you had a motorhome, you'd still be running from me. That's why you don't have one. <laughs> Talk about not trusting me. Oh, man. That was a cold shot, too, because I like Some of those are really nice. I said, but Lord, I can go to all these campsites and share the gospel and do all this, and you can minister through me all over the country as I travel, because everybody needs you. Oh, I had a whole list of excuses why I was going to run for my calling. And when I got done with my nonsense, he waited about two minutes, he said, You'd still be running and you would never fulfill right. your destiny. That's right. He says, Yes, you're an evangelist, but I gotta do some training first. Twenty-seven and a half years later, we're still being trained. Thank you, Jesus. John 14, Amen. 12 and 14. Jesus says to all of us, not some of us, not a select group of people, but all of his children. Cam. Most assuredly I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also, and greater works than these he will do, because I go to my Father. Whatever you ask in my name, that I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. You notice who does all the doing? God in you. Philippians 2.13, For it is God who works in you, both to will and to do for his good pleasure. What's God's good pleasure? That everybody prosper in all things, even under their health, even as their soul prospers. That every broken heart is healed. That every soul is restored. That every soul is saved. That every captive that's been in darkness has been set free to walk in the light. That's God's good pleasure. That's why he sent Jesus. But he died and rose again so his life can come live in us. So we can go out and do the works of Christ. But in those scriptures right there, prove it is not you that's going to do the work. It's him in you that does all the work. We are so works mentally thinking. We were, I was raised that way. I was talking, we were sitting yesterday and a brother came and sat at the table. I said, we're so geared to doing, to working, to striving, to accomplishing, to climbing mountains, to chopping down trees, to doing, to doing, to doing. Then you get saved and Jesus goes, okay, forget all that. It's wrong. Excuse me. Excuse me. He says, if you're doing, I'm not. And if you're doing it, it'll never bear fruit for my glory. Because you'll take credit and I won't get it. If God doesn't get the credit and the glory for what's going on in your life, then you're doing it and not Him. You want people looking at you and not Jesus. I'm sorry I didn't save anybody, although He's used to be the lead. I don't know how many thousands of people to the Lord in my years, especially when I was in California. And those people are still bearing fruit everywhere. Guess what? I didn't save them. I just took them to the Savior. I introduced them to Jesus who saves and heals. Even the thousands of books and Bibles I gave out in the street ministry in California, He gave it to them. Because He supplied what I needed to do the ministry. People were bringing me Bibles. They were bringing me books. Everybody goes, where did you get all the money for this? Never spent a dime on any of it. Because I didn't have any. I had a broken bag. <laughs> I wasn't working. But God brought me the supplies I need to reach an entire community over there. The food I needed to eat, the money to pay the rent, everything was provided for me by God, not by anything else. Because I, I had no way of earning it. I was walking around with a broken back and a hip out of socket. So guess what? I couldn't take care of it. I learned by faith all this stuff now. I learned that God says, I'm going to use you and I'm going to take care of everything you need to fulfill your destiny. So I don't look for need anymore because whatever God wants to do, we need a bigger building. We need classrooms. We need this. Blah, 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 blah. All the things we need for this ministry that He's shown us in the visions and dreams people have had in here. Guess what? I'm not going to go get it. I'm going to believe Him for it. Because He's going to manifest it at the perfect time. Yes. He's building this house. 
He's going to do great things. Yes. That dream Dean had last week confirmed everything God has shown me what's going to happen in this house. We're still in this building because that hasn't manifested yet. Yes. I keep asking how long, but we have moved up the, the totem pole. We had, you put a new faucet in the back bathroom. We're looking fancy now. <laughs> Uh, so that was a thank you, Jesus, okay? But see what I'm saying? My desire was that we're already out of here. Out of this building into something bigger to make more of an impact. But God's ways are so different than ours. So now I rejoice in the fact that we'll be out of this building at the exact day God says so. Amen. He already knows what day we're moving. He already knows who's going to come here Wednesday night for Bible study. Friday night for worship practice. Next Sunday morning. He knows when this place is going to be so filled and the parking lot's filled with people trying to get in. He knows the day we're moving. He knows the ones that are coming. He knew it before he said in the beginning. So my faith is not in me to grow this ministry, but in Him to build the house. My job is to submit every day and be obedient and say, God, you said you would confirm your word in us. What signs one is in miracles. I thank Him for it every day, but I thank Him that He put a fire in all of you. Amen. That when you leave here every Sunday, Wednesday, and Friday, you're waiting to be used by God. Because all of you are valuable to God. So many people say, well, God don't need you. Yes, He does need you, or you wouldn't be here. He can't fulfill all the prophecies in the Bible without you. See, you are important. So many Christians think they're not important to God. I've had people look at me, oh, God, can... okay, if I make a mistake and I'm off the planet, can God replace me? Sure he can. But he needs me. He needs me. You know why? Because I'm his friend. And so are all of you. He calls you friends. Yes. Start walking with your best friend. Then God will use you. Stop trying to do to get. Do because you love serving Jesus and you want to be used by him. Man, that's the blessing. All the rest of the stuff, who cares? You can buy me a mansion here on the planet tomorrow. Who cares? It's just another place to live as far as I'm concerned until I get home. Amen. I talked to that brother on the phone yesterday. He's got a big two-story house down in Orange County and stuff. But it's kind of empty. Kids are all grown and everything else. So it's just like, what do I do with it? I got this massive home on a golf course. Okay, what am I going to do now? Uh, and I said, you know what? I don't care. I said, because it doesn't matter. I said, as long as God's using me and I got a warm bed and food in the fridge, I'm good to go. I got a beautiful, godly wife who loves me. I'm used by God every day. Everything else is icing on the cake. It really is. Because I've, I've come to a place of peace with knowing why I'm here. And I'm not going to let anybody touch that. Amen. See, because once you make a decision, I'm never going to compromise. I'm in a different kingdom now. I belong to another now. I'm betrothed to Christ till He comes for me. Guess what? Once you make that decision, you'll watch God do stuff on your behalf. I'm telling you, all the people I've listened, there's going to be a manifestation of people being restored. The, the one guy talked last night about how that divine health, people are going to have years added back to their life like I've been praying over a bunch of you. Believe God for it. When He said He's going to restore your youth as that of an eagle, He will if you believe Him. When you believe you can walk disease-free, sickness-free, believe Him for it because the book says you can, you will. But if you don't make the good confession, if you agree with what the world says, that's what you'll have. But I refuse. Refuse. If it isn't in here, it's a lie of the devil. Amen. Amen. It's a lie of the devil. Don't you dare believe listen to bad reports. I don't deny the stuff is real out there. I just deny it has any right to me. And you should say the same thing, devil, you have no right to me. That's right. My yeah. sins have been settled with Jesus' blood. Amen. I am the redeemed, sanctified child of God. I am the pride of Christ. Yes. I have an inheritance with Jesus in Christ. And guess what? What is mine doesn't belong to you. Whatever you've taken, you give back. That's right. Because Amen. you don't have any rights here. Amen. you got to know your rights as a child of God. Yes. Amen. Oh, yes. 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 Let him cut that seat. Oh, man. I can keep going for about five hours on this. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Mm. I'm just excited about Jesus. Amen. Because I've gotten confirmation, the prophetic words that He's spoken in here through other men of God. 
when I hear them prophesying the same things uh -huh. by the Spirit of the Lord when they've been praying in the Spirit that He's been saying in here, uh -huh. I've had confirmation from about 10 or 12 of them. Praise God. Last night we got more confirmation. Praise God. I'm doing my ironing and then she put something on and I said, okay, well, we'll shut this off and listen to this. And boy, that was worth listening to. She turned it on at the perfect time. And then after listening and getting confirmation, I went back in the office and studied for another couple hours. See, even though I didn't ask for confirmation of the prophetic word that he spoke in here, he, he gave it to me. He gives it. Because you want that assurance in your heart. Yes. Because let me tell you something, you don't want to give false words. That's right. Because when you read about guys that did that in the Bible, they didn't, they didn't turn out so well. No. So it's actually the penalty's death. Mmm. Got quiet again. Folks, get excited about Jesus this year. Get excited what He wants to do with you this year. And ain't none of you can leave until you get rid of some of them desserts. It's Gary's birthday, so to celebrate with him, you have to eat some of the dessert. So it's Gary's fault. <laughs> Heaven celebrated your birth. Heaven did. Your God made it. I made mean, this image of likeness. All yes. of you remember that. Do you realize all of heaven celebrated the day you came out of your mother's womb? Because God created another beautiful child to be His. All of you are. God makes all things beautiful. See yourselves different today. Know who you are and your right standing before the Father through His Son, Jesus Christ. Expect this to be the greatest year you've ever had in all your life. And it will manifest if you can believe Him for not by your sight, but by your faith in the one that is faithful to make it ooh, manifest. Today He wants to fill you with His strength and not yours any longer. You've been wrestling, you've been striving, you've been doing and hoping things are going to work out. Forget your hopes. Speak the answers to all the things you're dealing with in your life with the Holy Word of God and it will deal with every one of your circumstances. Doesn't matter what it is, spiritual, mental, emotional, physical, financial. Speak the living Word of God and God will manifest Himself in your circumstances. Believe Him for the impossible. Receive all that God has for you today. Expect Him to be good to you because that's His nature. He loves you. He died for you. So you worry about nothing. Your concerns are nothing. They mean nothing. The only concern you have is hearing His voice. And knowing the voice of the one who died and, and rose again and who loves you more than you can possibly imagine. Now let Him cleanse your heart today. Some of you have stuff in your heart and it has to go. It's holding you back. It's keeping you captive. You are not set free because you refuse to allow God to change you. Change is good. 27 and a half years later, the Lord's still taking me through changes. And it's a blessing because it always brings me more peace and more joy and more freedom. For I know it is not I who live, but the one who lives within me is in full charge. And that gives my heart and my mind and my soul such rest in Him. Father, I pray that spirit of rest fill everybody today. That the only excitement they have, Almighty God, is what you're going to do in their lives, in them and through them and for them. And that this fivefold ministry really start to manifest and bear fruit, O God, with people getting saved and set free. The blind seeing, the lame walking, the deaf hearing, the dead being raised, demons being cast out. Every sickness going back to hell where it belongs and where it came from. So that your church walk in divine health the way you designed us to be. Because we are the temples of God. And you said in thy word, no plague, no pestilence will befall us, O oh God. For all the plagues and pestilence were nailed to Jesus on the cross. So we thank you, Father, in Jesus' name for another blessed day. We know this is just still early in the day. We have the rest of the day to worship you, to serve you, to love you, to obey you. So we submit ourselves into your hands right now and thank you that you take control of our lives. You lead us and guide us by the Holy Spirit of truth that leads us into all truth. Lord, let us not leave here the same today. Let us leave here committed, totally, 100% submitted to your will in yielded obedience under the Spirit of God in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 God is faithful. Believe them for the impossible this year. It's going to be a great year, amen?